So in this video, we are going to learn about dynamical systems and Markov chains. How matrix methods can be used to analyze the behavior of physical system that evolve over time. So a dynamical system is a finite set of variables whole values change with time. So the value of a variable at a point is called the state of the variable at that time. And the vector formed from this state is called the state of the dynamical system at that time. So let us begin by analyzing how the state of a dynamical system changes with time. So let's look at one of the example here. So it's, it is about the market share as a dynamical system because the market share might change every year. So it is a dynamical system where we have a two competing channels here, channel one and channel two. Initially, each has each have a 50% of the viewer market. So over each year, channel one will capture 10% from channel two viewers, whereas channel two will capture 20% from the first channel's shares. So what is the channel's market share after one year? So it is better for you to draw it out or to sketch a simple diagram to show the relationship between the channel one and channel two, as well as the movement of the audience. So let's have this box as a channel one and this box as a channel two viewer. And after one year, 10% of the channel two viewer will move to channel one and 20% of the first channel one viewer will be captured by channel two. And the rest of the 80% for this case will remain loyal to channel 1 whereas the leftover 90% will remain with channel 2 because the 10% will be captured by channel 1 that's why you have a 90% here and 80% here because another 20% will be captured by channel 2 so this is how you construct the simple diagram to show the relationship or the movement between the parameters the viewer share so let us begin by introducing the time dependent variable here so because this is a dynamical system, which means that the state of the parameter changes with time. So we need to have a time-dependent variables. So let's assume that x1 is the fractions of the market held by channel 1 at particular time, and x2 is the fraction of the market held by channel 2 at a particular time. So the column vector will be, if you're going to express both into a x vector will be, x1 and x2 given by the initial conditions when time is 0 so x t is 0 so initial conditions is 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 so in this case we divide the percentage by 100 to get the fractions because it's easier for us to deal with instead of having to write it out as a 50 and 50 then after one year we know that the market share of a first channel and second channel will be 0 0.45 and 0 0.55 based on these simple calculations where the share of the market share of first channel is because we know that 80% remain the same so 80% multiplied with the original market share and 10% from channel 2 that's why 0 0.1 multiply with the viewer share of channel 2 and you do the same for the second channel and this is the result that you will get 0 0.45 and 0 0.55 and now you can track the market shares of channel 1 and channel 2 over a 5 year period so this is the initial state after 1 year, 2 year, 3 year, 4 year and 5 year so you can use the same equations to find the market share for channel 1 after 2 years so we know that the conditions or the movement of the viewers are the same 80% remain loyal with it so which means that 80 percent 0 0.8 multiplied with the original viewer so in this case since we are at year two so the original state will be referring to year one that's why you have the 0 0.45 here because that's what we calculated here and for the second channel you have 0 0.9 multiplied 0 0.55 because this is the market share we of 10 in the first year and so this is the 10 percent from the market share of the second channel which is 0 0.55 and so on so you can calculate for the second year third year fourth year and fifth year and you can do the predictions until 10th 20th 40th and you can 
observe that the share of the market viewer, the viewer market shares, actually goes to stabilization. So the values doesn't change much if your predictions is go beyond maybe 10 years, 20 years, and 40 years. We'll talk about this stabilization at the end of the lessons. So I just want to introduce you with the Markov chains. In many dynamical systems, the states of the variables are not known with certainty, okay? Because this is about predictions. We don't know with certainty that after 10 years, the market share of the channel one will be this figure. But we can express this as a probability. So such a dynamical system are called stochastic processes. And the probability that an experiment or observation will have a certain outcome is approximately the fractions of time that the outcome would occur if the experiment were to be repeated many times under constant conditions. So these constant conditions means that the changes will be the similar, which means that after one year, 10% of the set of the channel two viewers will be captured by channel one and vice versa, 20% will be captured by channel two. And the greater the number of repetition, the more accurately the probability describe the fractions of all currents. So this statement can be shown by, can be proved by the tossing the coins. If the coin is tossed many times under constant conditions, we will expect that about half of the outcomes to be heads or tails. Or you could use another example here. If an experiment or observation has n possible outcomes, then the probabilities of those outcomes must be non-negative fractions because this is about probabilities. So it must be a positive fractions. It could be zero or another positive values, but it could never be a non-negative. And the sum of all the possible outcomes must be one because this is probability. So let's imagine that you have a box with have six purple ball, three red ball, and one green ball. So when you draw the ball out from the boxes, out from the box, you'll find out that the probability to get the purple ball is around 0 0.6 or 60%. To get a red ball is 30% and to get the green ball is 10% and the summation is 100% or 1 here. So if I'm if I'm going to put them the outcome here into a vector form where p is the probability vector p1, p2, p n. So n here refers to the number of possible outcomes. So possibility that the system is instead 1, 2 or n. And the sum of this probability vector must be 1. 